You know, I've been keeping reptiles for 30 plus years, and uh, the interesting thing is that through that entire time, we've always called it the reptile hobby. So I was reading a comment on another video the other day, and someone made a point that I hadn't really thought about that much, to be honest with you, and they said, like, isn't it weird that people that keep reptiles call it a hobby? Most other animals, with the exception of maybe fish keeping, they don't call it a hobby. I mean, if you think about, if you kept uh, five dogs, you wouldn't say I'm in the dog hobby. So uh, it just started to make me think about it a little bit. And I realized that it's semantics, right? I mean, you know, whether you call it a reptile hobby or not, but I do kind of wonder a little bit about about the fact that, you know, now that reptile keeping has become so popular and so mainstream, to be totally honest with you, you know, is this something that we should think about? Because to people that really don't have a lot of, you know, knowledge about keeping reptiles, if they hear us say the reptile hobby, maybe they'll look at it as like, we don't look at these animals the same way that we look at other pets. I mean, the fact is, is that keeping reptiles is amazing. The amount of behavior that they have, the relationships that we're gaining with these and stuff like that. And I think that maybe 30 years ago when people were calling it a reptile hobby, it was a hobby because we really didn't know how amazing these animals actually were. And I want to make it clear that I'm not criticizing anyone because I've called it the reptile hobby my entire life as well. The other thing that I think is a little bit weird and something that we just want to have a conversation about is the fact that whenever I would get a new animal like this no block eye here, I would always say that I'm adding it to my collection, right? We call all of our animals a collection in the reptile hobby, which is a little bit weird, right? I mean, like, is it really a collection? Are we collecting toys? I'm not saying that we're wrong in the sense that we all have feelings for these animals. I'm saying from an optic standpoint, from people on the outside of the reptile community, are people looking at it as like, oh gosh, they're just collecting animals like inanimate objects, like uh, they don't even think that they have lives and feelings and stuff like that. And I wonder if it's time to maybe take a little bit of a different task. Now, I don't know what we should call it. Should we just call it reptile keeping? I mean, fish is like a hobby, but they also call it fish keeping. Maybe we should start calling it reptile keeping, and maybe we should kind of get away from reptile reptiles as a collection and maybe just call them, you know, our animals. I'm not really sure. I'd like to know from you guys down in the comments, what do you think about this topic? It's just something, again, after I read that comment on someone else's video, I thought, you know, that's kind of right. You know, I hadn't really thought about it much, but we should probably change the semantics of what we actually talk about so that people that don't know us reptile people don't think that we don't care about these animals as much as they care about their cats or dogs, because I know for a fact I care as much as I do about my dogs and cats, and I'm willing to bet that most of you guys do as well. You know these terms like hobby and collection, they don't come from just anywhere. They actually probably come from the origins of what we did, right? Back in the 60s and 70s, it was kind of a hobby. Hardly anyone kept reptiles, and the people that did keep reptiles, they probably looked at it as a hobby, not to mention herping is a hobby. And what the definition of herping is, is going out in the wild and actually collecting animals, whether you're going to keep them or photograph them or video them or whatever the case might be. And that's most likely where collection came in, right, too, is because way back in the 60s and 70s, people weren't breeding reptiles, they were actually collecting them in the wild and then keeping them in their collection. So you probably understand where the origins are, right? It was a hobby back then and it was a collection back then because people were collecting. But over the last 40 years, things have changed a tremendous amount and maybe it's time to change. Now, I'm not saying we should, I'm not saying anything, and I'm certainly not telling you guys what to do. I'm just opening up a conversation that I thought was kind of interesting. So enough of all that. I was just curious and I wanted to get that off my mind. I wanted to start the conversation. So down in the comments, let me know what you guys think. So after all of that, let's go and get back to some reptile keeping. Well guys, guess what? <laughs> I feel like a broken record. Is this deja vu? Uh, wet floor, leaking pond, our fix didn't work. Now, uh, again, I thought that all the problem was in the waterfall. Now it apparently isn't in the waterfall. But again, when Lori caulked the front over here, it actually stopped leaking for a few days, but then started leaking again. So somewhere in here, the waterfall is backing up and somehow leaking. Haven't, it just, mechanism doesn't make sense, right? Because like I said, this is actually like an aquarium, essentially, right? The back and the front and the sides are an aquarium. And then the back part where they land and the filters, that's a separate thing. We know that's not leaking because we can see underneath it and it's not wet at all. The wetness comes from underneath here. And we know that it's not the tank leak either because when we shut off the waterfall, it doesn't leak. So we know it's not a scene. Where that water is coming from, I have no idea. So back to square one and trying to figure this sucker out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what are you doing? Uh, I'm just checking on Carl. 
Carl. So obviously this is our emerald green tree boa, and basically these are, they're not the nicest snake in the world, and they're not the most handleable snakes. But basically we just do, you know, every maybe once a month, we'll kind of just get him off his branch and take a look at him and see. Make sure he's doing okay. Obviously we don't want to get bit by this guy. This, you know, emerald green trees have the largest teeth of any non-venomous snake. So we've seen a couple of his teeth in the past. I'm pretty sure Brian has a viral video of him eating or something. And I don't want to see any holes or anything in my arm from this guy. Oh crap. I think he's uh... I think I'd rather get bit by those scrub pythons. There's no way to grab him now. He just wants pets. There's no way in God's green earth am I getting bit by this thing. I don't want to go get stitches. I don't want to die. So dramatic, dude. I'll be dramatic all I want. You know how fast these things are? There he is. Yeah, look at his colors. He's so pretty. We don't even get to see the top of him all that often, but he's always sitting on that branch. You can see his iridescence. Don't come up the hook. But obviously, this is kind of what we do. We just kind of get him out, get him on the ground, make sure he looks good. You know, no scale, nothing, no problems. Obviously, we want to make sure he doesn't have any kind of infections or, you know, he's not too thin, not too fat. These guys are really known for getting overweight. Power feeding these guys aren't good, you know. They're only going to eat birds whenever they land on the branch. Ah, this is by far one of my favorites. Snakes. This is like the pinnacle snake. No joke snake. Definitely don't want to get bit by this. I guess he looks pretty good. He's not overweight. You can see you don't see his bone showing. He's not skinny. Nothing like that. So I think he's good. We're going to put him back into his uh, enclosure without getting bit. Hi oh, buddy. He just wants chin rubs, buddy. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. He's just misunderstood. So the, the greens and the yellows and the iridescence and the whites is just unbelievable. You sound like an Italian at dinner. The mozzarella and the scavrigio and the, and the fumar. I don't know what none of that means. <laughs> I made up three of those words. I knew mozzarella because that's cheap. <laughs> now I gotta get him back. So the other thing that you guys might notice is the way that he moves. See, look how he pushes up against the hook like that. So he doesn't necessarily want to bite. So when those, when you have that big of teeth, it's kind of like almost painful. Like that. Yeah, I'm good with that. It's so cool. Sorry, Carl. Gotta do your monthly checkup. It's a new year and I'm coming back to you with my friends over at Raycon because let's start this new year with a bang, right? And one of the things I'm telling myself is that I'm gonna do more like walking and maybe jogging. And of course my earbuds from Raycon are definitely gonna help with that because I love them. You guys know I've been using them for a couple years now. This is my original pair, right? Now I've bought tons of them for other friends of mine and gifts and stuff like that. They're absolutely incredible. About half the price of other premium brands but sound just as good. And with their optimized gel, tip I tell you they're comfortable as heck and when I am jogging which I don't exactly like to do but I'm challenging myself to do more of it they're not going to fall out of my ears I also listen to podcasts sometimes when I'm editing I use them I mean they're just great for everything and the fact that these have lasted me over two years might be time for me to get a new pair but they work so great I know that you guys are going to love them as much as I do and the thing I love about these guys they have eight hours of playtime, and with this amazing little uh, pack here that you actually get charged with you actually have 32 hours of playtime. that means if you're going camping or something like that or you're going on a trip you don't have to worry about plugging these guys in for over 32 hours I mean that's pretty amazing not to mention they have 48 thousand five-star reviews I mean come on guys you know Raycon is absolutely amazing I've been pitching them for a long time and I love them to death and everyone I've given them to loves them to death and right now you can actually save 15% that's right save 15% click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash Brian B to get 15% off your Raycon purchase so Mike definitely babies our albino box turtle Tyson uh, last time we weighed him how much was he eight grams eight grams so let's go ahead and weigh him again make sure that he's growing really well And the one thing we learned from Sam from Florida Iguana and Tortoise is weighing your tortoises and turtles are very important. So uh, let's just go ahead and see if Tyson gained a little weight. Look at that, 11 grams, uh, 10 to 11 grams. So he gained about two to three grams, uh, which is good. You know, that means he's growing and stuff like that. So this is the best way for us to kind of get an example because he's so small, it's so hard to tell. Yeah. You know, And obviously it's gonna change a little a gram or two because if he poops or if he eats or whatever the case is, he hasn't eaten today. So this is just on an empty stomach. But again, he could have peed or poo or something like that and it's actually a little bit less so he's probably somewhere between 10 and 12 grams to be honest with you so uh so that's good keep it go keep it going yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are you coming yeah hold on man. 
What's going on, man? You, you got a poop or is it? No, well, I do, but that's not why I'm limping. The alumni, I played alumni hockey game last night. Took a shot off there, I was in front of the net. And we actually scored on that, by Did the you? way. Congratulations. I was on the ice for three goals. All right, well, let's not make this an excuse not to work, okay? Okay. You got your friend? It's Clementine. Clementine, he's so cute. Now, I'm not sure if this is, uh, what this actually is. It says fragile, handle with care. Uh, I've been waiting for a package from Facebook that we're sending me stuff, stuff. Don't know if this is it, because it doesn't say Facebook on it. It's just like a, a generic thing, but I don't know what this is. Let's see. Oh, Can you hold? Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Handle with care, I thought this was an animal. No, not an animal. Dun, dun, dun. What do oh, we have? is this it? This might be it. Is it a glass slipper? It doesn't say anything though. I don't know, this is so interesting. It is wow. from Facebook, yeah! Oh. So Facebook actually sent us an Oculus Quest 2. What? So I this is dope. Look at it, from Facebook, like you, thank you so much, Facebook. It's uh, awesome, they, they reached out to me a, a couple weeks ago and said, hey, we'd like to send you this to, to check out and have fun with. And uh, really? so have you ever messed with this? No, let's see the side. Does it come with games and all? Oh, you could do rock climbing, you could do rock skydiving. Climbing. This is our, our, uh, our note from Facebook. <gasps> Oh, I actually saw this. This is like a hangout game. You you go and then you hang out with people with the quest. So it's almost too. like the metaverse, right? Yeah, you hang. Oh you make your gosh. own like emoji it guy. Says thank you for your partnership. We hope you enjoy your Meta Quest Two and invite you to explore the metaverse with us. Warm wishes from your friends from Meta. Thank you guys. That's awesome. Look at we got Jurassic World. What? Too. We gotta play. Oh, this, this is gonna be so this dope, awesome. man. I can see. All right, we're probably gonna have to skip a week of vlogs because I'm gonna be at home just playing this. So uh, again, thank you guys over at Facebook, I mean Meta, you guys are awesome. Where are you? I'm just looking at, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Here, you actually, uh, let me get the right control. Are you supposed to you. pull something out? There's like, yeah, there you go. Are you in the Metaverse? <laughs> are you in Ready Player One? Are you not allowed to talk in the Metaverse? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, are you, where are you guys at? <laughs> Dad, follow the sound of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> are you in the menu? Yeah, I'm in the menu. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the menu verse. This is great. <laughs> Holy shit, it got dark. Wait, it says please stay seated for setup. You're standing. Oh wait, I gotta search for Wi-Fi. <laughs> What's the password for Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Lori? I can't do anything. All right, here we go. Whoa. Maybe it's for a younger audience. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm young. I'm hip. This is crazy, man. It is literally, I can't even tell that you guys are in the world. I like, I'm, 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 like, I'm in the so, world. So, right you've got nothing on your ears, though, so there's no sound. No, it's I just can hear soundless. it. You guys don't hear it. Well, I can tell you the metaverse seems exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. 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 It seems like a knitting retreat over here. Is that yeah, what we're doing? Knitting that's VR? More, that's more exciting than this. You just, oh shit. <laughs> I don't even know where I am. You're doing the controls for her? There's, there's nothing, it's just, it's just all yeah. right now. Come on, give me that. I see them, I can't reach them. So it's like, okay, it's just a big screen in front of you. It's like I'm sitting at the movies, but it's really boring because all it is is this. <laughs> <laughs> It says you can remove your headset. I, I had to, I had to get the boys and uh, show them, show them something, because I, I actually blew my mind. Uh, so last night, one of our, uh, one of our insects, our new stick bugs, actually molted. All right, buddy. So that's one. Now check this big boy out. That's the molt. Oh, wow. So see how much like there's there's wings on him and stuff like now now too. He evolved. Well, it, it, it's, it's like a, a Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. Well, it's a female. So females like in, fa in phasmids, females uh, have underdeveloped wings. So that's what that is. Like, from my understanding, like again, I'm not an expert on this, but that's crazy. So look how huge this guy that is one compared to her. That one into the charger and let him evolve overnight. It's like real life Pokemon, right? These are Bulbasaur. Hey, you guys want to Be careful because they just fall off for no reason at all. I don't know why they continue to grow. They Probably because it's odd, like you know, it's, it, fall. It, it's fall, so they probably think. <laughs> 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 this, they can't use the wings though. What? 
They can't <laughs> use the wings. Yeah, the females can't use the wings. Males can, though. It's fall time. You see a bunch of leaves falling, and then one of the leaves fly back up into the tree. <laughs> You'd be like, what is that? Dude, that's like shaking. Like I'm shaking. Isn't that cool? Shaking like a leaf. Yeah, like a, like a leaf uh, in, the, in the wind. It's almost like that was a saying or something. Shaking like, shaking like a salt shaker, shaking like a salt shaker. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, can you do me a favor? Here is a playlist right here. You can roll through a couple more videos. It would help me out a lot. You know what else would help me out? On this side, you can hit that subscription button. It would mean the world to me. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.